Hello health champions, let's talk about 10 HIT exercises to help you burn belly fat. Number one is slam ball and HIT stands for high intensity interval training. That means you do something very intensely for a short period of time. And slam ball is a good example. You use a heavy ball, 15, 20, 30 pounds, and you don't want it to bounce a whole lot. It's more just like a sandbag. You slam it down and you got to pick it back up. And what you want to think about though is to go as much as possible in a straight line, straight up and pull straight down. In this video, you see a guy doing it on the beach. I think he has a rock or something and his form is not fantastic. He's going a little bit too much forward to backwards and he's not really good at protecting his back. So make sure you go straight up, straight down and protect your back. Interestingly, the vast majority of exercises to burn belly fat involves crunches. But the problem is it doesn't work. You cannot choose a specific spot to burn fat. It doesn't do that. So what happens is you muscle burn. So if you focus on crunches, then you work out one muscle a whole lot and it burns. But there is no physiological relationship. There is no breaking down of the fat on top of the muscle. If some exercise manages to break down fat, which all of it does to some degree, but you're not breaking it down from the specific area you're working out. When you break down fat, it's called lipolysis and it is systemic. It happens equally all around the body. So focal training doesn't work for burning fat. Crunches can still be a good thing if they're performed correctly because you build a strong core and that's a good thing. Number two is medicine ball and just like the slam ball you could probably use the same ball. It is heavy and what you want to do in this example is you squat down and throw it up. This guy is showing excellent form. He's protecting his back. He's got his weight on his heel. He goes deep and he pushes up as hard as he can. Uses his whole body. Uses large muscles with high intensity. Excellent exercise. Number three is sledgehammer. So if you have a tractor tire and a big sledgehammer, then you want to use a tall posture, go as high as you can, pull that sledge down on the tire and slam it down. And this guy is showing excellent form. He is not pausing at all. He's just going from one to the next, which means very high intensity. Now what I have found personally is that a pickaxe works equally well. In my backyard, if you go with a pickaxe and you go really hard at it, that heart rate can really come up. And I like to use my energy for something productive. Another popular one is number four, battle ropes. And here you can do it different ways. You can use your arms and go alternating one at a time, or you can pull the arms together up and down. And when you do that, you want to go as tall as possible and then slam it down and use as much of your body as possible. Now if you do it together to me that makes it a little bit higher intensity because you can incorporate more of your body at one time. If you look at this guy he is certainly getting a strenuous exercise but his legs aren't moving, his glutes are not working, it's static. Whereas this lady, see how her whole body is going up and down. She's using her hips, her legs, and I think she could get even higher to get a little bit more intensity out of it. So I said that crunches are not really a great idea to burn belly fat, but why then would high intensity interval training work? Is it because we're burning more calories per minute? Well, Yes, we are burning more calories, but the whole point of high intensity is that we keep it so short that we're only really working at that high level for a few minutes. So for such a short time, you're not really going to burn any more calories. However, it is what happens afterwards because you release hormones, you stress your body so that you increase your metabolism for several hours after the workout. And what happens when you go all out, when it's truly maximum high intensity, you're increasing your production of growth hormone 
dramatically. And here's what growth hormone does. It promotes muscle building and it promotes fat burning. So when you break down fat, you're making energy, but it's not at the expense of muscle. That is exactly what you want. That allows you to build muscle over time. And now when you have more muscle, what happens is muscle is more metabolically active. You have replaced fat tissue, which is very low metabolism at rest with something that has higher vascularity and burns more energy than fat, even at rest. And then there's the thing about body wisdom. Now this is my own personal opinion. I've never seen anything published on this, but I believe this is one aspect of how it works as well. That if you weigh 400 pounds and you're sitting on your sofa watching a movie and the only strain you put on your body is to click that remote control, then your body has no reason to change anything. That body works perfectly fine to sit on the sofa and eat pizza and drink beer and click that remote. However, if you're being chased by a wild animal, if you have to fight for your survival, if you have to exert maximum force to get away from something, then your body senses that that extra 100 pounds is quite hindering. It's not going to improve your survival. So if you put your body through that on a regular basis, your body says, you know, if this keeps happening, I'm probably not going to survive with this extra weight. So the body wisdom, in my opinion, is going to work. It's going to increase the metabolism somewhat to burn off that fat so you can have a body that fits your lifestyle and your environment. Again, it's not the biggest component necessarily, but I do think that's part of it. Number five is using a bike. You could use a stationary bike, you could use a road bike. And the great thing here is that it's relatively safe. On the road, maybe you'll hit some speeds, but on a stationary bike, you're gonna stay in one place. And you don't have to be extremely athletic. You don't have to have this enormous fitness or body control. And if you have some knee issues, you're not gonna put a lot of weight on them. And the key here is to do it in bursts. You can do 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, but it has to be all out. If you can do it for 30 minutes, it's not the type of high intensity that we're talking about. Number six is box jumps, and this can be extremely effective. The trick is that you have to be pretty fit and have pretty good body control to do it safely. If you're very fit, you can do a continuous up and down. And if you're not quite as fit, you want to make sure that you do it a little bit slower and you pause between the jumps so you don't risk anything. And here's an example of some very fit people that just go back and forth, back and forth. There's no pause on the floor. They just go right back to it, which would give you the highest intensity. But again, make sure that you do it safely and that you're fit enough for what you're trying to do. Now let's try to understand this type of exercise a little bit. We said that if you do it for 30 minutes, it's not really hit. So the key is to do very, very short, intense bursts. But it doesn't mean that there's just one way to do it. It means that you can do different things depending on the intensity, depending on your fitness, depending on the situation. It could be 10 seconds, it could be up to maybe two minutes, and then you can repeat or you can just do one of them. But here's what you're trying to look for. You're trying to do something with high speed, high intensity. You're trying to get your heart rate way, way up. And the key here, if you're working on heart rate primarily, is to get it close to or all the way up to your maximum heart rate, which is roughly 220 minus your age. So again, that's not an absolute number. Mine, for example, will still get a good bit higher than that. It helps you get to your maximum heart rate if you can use your largest muscles or ideally all the muscles in your body at the same time. But if you're doing something like weightlifting or you're doing squats or you're doing a leg press machine, you can still do high intensity just because you're using the largest muscles in your body if you do it heavy enough. The other key is to do it dynamic. You want to use large movements 
So depending on the weight, you want to do it at the highest speed and the highest dynamic range that you can handle at that weight for that exercise. And another key is to do it basically until you fail. And why is that? Because you're sending a message to your body. You're telling your body that I'm going to keep doing this. We had a situation today where this body just wasn't quite good enough and that gives the body the message it has to change something. And the way it changes is to produce more growth hormone so you can build more muscle and burn off some fat and get better because you're planning to do it again very soon. The other thing to understand is because you're doing it so intensely, you're also stressing your body. So I would suggest that you don't want to do this more than twice a week. If you're super fit, if you're an athlete, if you're pursuing a specific goal, maybe do it three times a week. But ideally, I think twice a week. And very often I read a magazine or I see a video where they're talking about a 45 minute high intensity interval training circuit. Well, if you can do it for 45 minutes, even if it's intervals within there, you're not really meeting the criteria that we talked about. Because if you can do it for 45 minutes, then you're not failing. Now, something I used to do when I was an athlete, preparing for the Olympics, I did a lot of sprints. And one workout that I did probably two to three times a week, especially during the hard period, was six times 150 meters. That was a good distance for me because it was short enough that I could do several of them, but it was long enough that I could get my heart rate up to maximum. So I would do a warm up to get myself ready, to get my body up to that level of performance to that intensity. Then I would run all out 150 meters and that meant about 17 and a half to 18 seconds when I was at my best. And during that 18 seconds I would hit a maximum heart rate. It would get 220 or above. But because it was so intense and I wanted to do six of these I needed a good amount of rest. So I would take three or four or sometimes even five minutes toward the end of the workout to be able to do another one at that intensity. So the workout might last for 30 minutes, but my total high intensity training was less than two minutes. This video is not the list about the best exercises. These are examples to help you understand how you can make up your own. Number seven is running in place. So this may not be as intense as some of the others, but the beauty of it is you can do it anytime. You can do it at home. You don't need any specific equipment and it's very, very simple. So the key though is to work your arms. Now I'll show you a couple of videos to demonstrate that. If you're really fit, you can bring your knees up to raise the intensity. If you're not so fit, then don't worry about the high knees. Here's an example of what I don't recommend. He is pretty much static. There are no large movements. He's going fast, but he's not involving any large muscle groups. His arms are pretty much still. Uh, don't do it this way. And don't do it this way either. This guy has no motion from the shoulder. It's all at the elbow and he is not lifting his knees at all. He's using his hamstrings only. But here's what you want it to look like. Look at the shoulders, look at the large dynamic movements, the high knees. He's using all the large muscle groups in his body. Number eight is another classic, burpees. You can do them with weights, you can do without weights, you can do jumping jacks, you can jump straight. Now the beauty of this, I think, is to use your body weights. So I don't really see the purpose of using extra weights. And here's a girl who does a really nice job. She's keeping her back straight when she's in the plank position and she is jumping up. She's extending far. She's getting a lot of big muscle groups involved. And if you really push off and jump, you could hit some high heart rate very, very quickly on this. Number nine is one of my favorites. It's probably what I do the most which is sprints and you can do them upstairs, you can do them uphill, you can do them on an inclined treadmill or you can do it on a flat surface like a track. 
Now the beauty of doing it uphill is that you have gravity working against you. So you don't have to go as fast because the faster you go, the more likely that you get injured, that you pull a muscle or you get out of control. Here's a great example of doing it in a park somewhere. He's got really good form. He's pumping his arms, he's lifting his knees and he's getting some really good intensity. Working against gravity makes it easier to get tired. And hit exercise number 10 would be squat jumps. Again, a beautiful exercise that you don't need any special equipment. As long as you're fit enough to do it, you can do it with your legs together, with your feet side by side, or you can do it like a split or a lunge jump. And here's a girl showing really good form. She's got her heels on the ground. She's going straight up and down with full extension. My only reservation on this one is that it might be a little hard on the knees to go that deep into a squat. I might stop that a little bit earlier. This guy using splits is not extending as far up, but you can surely exhaust yourself very quickly with this exercise. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love that one. And if you truly want to master health by understanding how the body really works, Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell and turn on all the notifications so you never miss a life-saving video.